Hello YouTube, it's Francis and welcome back to a brand new video. And in this video we are gonna learn about PVM or pulse width modulation, how it works and how we can use it to our advantage. I'm pretty sure that most of you have experimented with dynamically controlling power to different devices such as electric motors, LED diodes, or light bulbs, or even heaters or Peltier modules. The list is endless. By your own intuition, you probably have figured out if you increase the voltage, the motor will spin faster and the LED will shine brighter. And just the same thing will happen to the light bulb. So when you played with different voltages, you basically reinvented the linear power control. In technical words, you built a linear power supply. But today we are here to learn about another kind of power control that is based on modulating the width of the pulse. You can see it happening on the screen of my oscilloscope. Pulse width modulation consists of cycles. This is a cycle. This cycle has a fixed peak-to-peak -peak voltage, which is, let's say, 5 volts in our test case. We have two very important parameters we have to pay attention to. One is the frequency, the occurrence of our pulses in time, and the other one is the duty cycle, which is defined by the time when the pulse is on and the time when the pulse is off. So if the pulse is on 50% of the time and it's off in 50% of the time, our duty cycle is 50%. And if we have 70% on time and 30% off time, the duty cycle is 70%. Let's see those duty cycles in real life. Here I just have to sync up with the input signal. And there it is. So this is a 100% duty cycle. There is no off time here, it's basically a DC voltage. I have a signal generator in my hand of camera that you cannot see, but I will control the duty cycle from there and you can see the output on the screen of my oscilloscope. So here we have a 10% duty cycle, you can see that the off time is 90% and there is a 20%, 30% and that is a 60% and 70 and 80 and 90 and you can see that the off time is only 10% and there is your 100% and we go down to 0% which is a permanent ground in this case. This is what we call switch mode power control and this way you can create a switch mode power supply. So let's recap what we have learned so far. So for the switch mode power supply we have the ground and we see C which is the power supply voltage and we switch it in different frequencies or stable frequencies that depends on your use case and you can play with the duty cycle and in the linear power regulations case we control the power supply voltage so let's see how the power ratio turns out for the switch mode power supply we take all the T on values and on a stable frequency we can see that if we add all the T on values together um, sorry I messed it up here let me redraw the effect so the on times divided by the total time and multiplied by 100 gives the duty cycle in a percentage and this percentage signifies the power we use from our nominal maximum and that will give us the effect, the power that we can leverage from this power source. And for the linear power supply, we get the full effect at the maximum rated power supply voltage. At 100%, we get 100% effect. And at VCC divided by 2, so half the 
maximum rated power supply voltage, we get a 50% effect. But don't just take my word for it. I set up this experiment where we can see how I control this very simple switching power supply I built on the board. It just uses one MOSFET and one battery, and I will control the pulse width with my trusty frequency generator in my hand of camera. You can see the wires leading up to it. And you will see the effect on the light bulb, how the brightness will change as I increase the duty cycle. You can observe the duty cycle, the pulse width, on the screen of the oscilloscope. Please forgive me that the pulses are not perfect square waves, uh, it's the noise of this many budge wire cables, <laughs> but uh, yeah. So let's see a complete duty cycle run in 10% increments. At 0% the light bulb is off. And I increase it to 10%, it's still off. At 20% it comes on, 30%, 40%, and 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, and a hundo. Here it's full effect, the light bulb is bright as the sun, and here we start going backwards, 90%, 90 70%, 60%, 50%, 40%, 30%, 20%, and 10%, where you don't even see the light shine anymore. So let's see the pros and cons and the applications for each of these power regulation modes. Linear power supplies were in use in every kind of equipment before the switch mode power supplies and they are still preferred today because of their low noise, low ripple characteristics in applications such as audio and precision equipment. But their cons is that they are bulky and heavy and that bulky and heavy transformer costs a lot. So it's heavy, takes up a lot of space, and very expensive. So for these reasons, switched mode power supplies came into existence. So from this we know that uh, switch mode power supplies are quite the opposite in physical aspects uh, of the linear power supply. So it's pretty light, pretty compact, and very, very cheap too. And it has one more very huge advantage, that switch mode power supplies are pretty efficient. They are really high up in the league. But due to their nature, they might introduce some noise into the system, so they are not preferred in the slow noise applications. But switch mode power supplies are all around you. Your mobile charging brick, your laptop's charging brick, your LED controller, whatever. Every household equipment around you uses a switch mode power supply because you can manufacture it for pennies and they are pretty reliable and if it's not for a specialized equipment that cannot deal with any noise it does the job just fine. So from powering your PC or your mobile phone or any household equipment it's fine enough. So this has been PWM Basics, now you understand the core concept of PWM and how switch mode power supplies work. And if you like this video, please give it a like and subscribe to support the channel. It's totally free and that way you will be notified if I upload a new video. As always, have a very wonderful day and Francis signs out.